Okay, so I thought I'd walk through an example of working with the group data and do it from A to Z and everything you could do with it. And I'm going to do most of this work with a spreadsheet, but that just saves me from having to write everything down and to make a mistake in my calculation. So this is from page 39 out of the Think Do book and one of, one of the explanation problems. And Dr. Stevens had already given you the class midpoints and all that. So I just kind of removed those to refresh your memory and how to do that. So I see this data. One thing I like to do is always look at the shape of a distribution. Uh, this is quantitative data. So I created, a, by hand here, I created a, a, a histogram of that data. And I knew my, I had my bins, I had my classes. Um, and so I graphed it. And what am I seeing? I'm seeing a tail to the left. So that's a left, I'm going to call that a left skewed distribution, I think. It looks left skewed. I mean, there's some weird stuff going on here in the middle, but generally it's left skewed. Most of the data is on the right. The bulk of the data is to higher numbers and very few lower numbers. So I'll do that. Now we can check that once we calculate these uh, mean and the median to compare them. So how do we calculate the mean of group data? Well, you know, when you calculate a mean, you get a, um, um, find the sum of all the numbers and divide by how many numbers you have. So I don't know the actual data. So I estimate, I found the midpoint, the way I found the midpoint here, let me, I said I'd do that. I just averaged the 30 and the 39 and 30 plus 39 is 69. Divide that by two, you get 39, 34.5. And 40 plus 49 is 89 divided by two is 44.5. And I could continue. The other thing I want you to notice the class width here is 10. See, I was going up by 10 each time. Don't think about the class width going this way. You can, but you, there's, there's, if you have to count 30 as one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, th that's going to be uh, 10 numbers. So 10, 10 coming down, 10 coming down. So it's an easier way to find the class width, I think. So notice how these midpoints go up by 10. So once you find the first midpoint, it's easy just to add 10, easier than averaging those. So I hope that makes sense. So then how many 34.5s are there? Well, there's one of them. How many 44.5s are there? There's three of them. How many 65.5s are there? There's nine of them. So instead of listing out, you know, I don't want to have to type out 34.5. Let's see, I typed that wrong. That's why I don't want to type it out. 34.5, and there's one of them. And then I'd have to type out three 44.5s, and then I'd have to type out five 54.5s. You get the idea. We don't want to have to do that. I mean, with 42 numbers, it's not that bad. If I had hundreds, you wouldn't want to do that. So the group data is just the easier way to do it. And mathematically, it's the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the midpoint times how many times it happens. So on a spreadsheet, I don't know your comfort level with spreadsheets. I'm doing equals to tell it I'm doing a formula. I'm going to click on the 34.5. Notice that cell A2. And then we do times the frequency cell for that bin, which is B2. Notice the way uh, Google Sheets Excel does a similar thing. Um, how the first cell is orange, the second cell is purple. I, I, I think the color doesn't mean anything. It's just, it shows you it's different. And then the beautiful thing about a spreadsheet, instead of having to type that again, go back to the cell you just calculated, put your cursor on that little square that's right there. You see how your cursor goes to a plus sign? You just take and drag that down and it'll fill it down. See what it did? Is it now it's taking 54.5 times five that cell times five and so on, okay? So now we need to find out how many numbers there are. I already told you there's, there's 42. Uh, I think maybe Dr. Stevens tells you that. But the way you do is a sum in a spreadsheet is do equals, write the word SUM, get that left parenthesis, and you just fill it down. See how you just dragged it down? Uh, on Chrome, this will actually fill in automatically. It'll make a suggestion. Um, and then, yes, I could just type equal sum again here, but I could also just go to the plus sign, fill it right, and see what it did, found the sum of that column. Now to get the mean, I'm gonna take that 3069 divided by the 42, and I don't wanna to have to type all that. So I'm gonna do equals, click on that number, 
divided by, click on that number, and there's the average. So the average is about 73.07. So that's something that Dr. Stevens has you do. Now the next part isn't something that he has you do in the book. I would really love you to be able to do this. Um, I'm not gonna require that you do, but um, I really would like you to. Okay, so to find the standard deviation, I gotta remember, let's see, I'm gonna remember that, I'm gonna copy that number. So I set that up over here, and I'm gonna paste that value. Uh, did you know, I, I jumped through that. If I don't wanna, if I just copied, say I went back here, and I copied, I went to Control C, uh, or on a Mac, it's a, it's a what, Apple C, or what is it now? Option, no, what is it on the Mac? Uh, command C, that's what it is. On the Mac, it's the, no, they don't have the Apple anymore. They do the command, command C. And on a Chromebook, it's control C also. Um, so that copies. Now, if I came over here and just pasted, you see what it did? It pasted the formula. There's no data like that on this page. So one way to get around that, if you just want the value, what you do, so remember I copied it to memory, you can do edit, paste special, values only, and that'll just paste the number, it won't paste the values. Okay, that's a trick, that's a trick, it's an important trick to know about. Here, it looks like I gotta select this differently, I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so uh, I guess what I should do is I should refresh your memory what the, what the formula is to find the standard deviation. Okay, so the way we calculate the standard deviation is we first find the variance, and all this, all this math means is you find the sum, the Greek letter sigma means whenever you see that in math, you say add them up, and you do the mean, you take each value, subtract the mean from it, you square the difference, you add up all those values, you divide it by one less than the number of values you have, that's your variance. Then you need to find the standard deviation, we take the square root of that. Okay, now uh, maybe I should show you this on your calculator. If you have a calculator, uh, can I zoom in? I don't know if I can zoom in on this. Here, clear. If you want to do with P, this always comes up. Um, you see, on my graphing calculator, and even even a basic calculator has this on your on your phone. Even um, x squared squares a number. The square root tells me what number times itself is here. Let's, let's experiment with that because this gives people a hard time. If I know that six squared is 36, six times six is 36. If I want to take the square root of that, I'm going to do second square root. And usually on your phones, on the modern phones, you do this. The square root of 36, we should be getting six, okay? And if you've been done pre-calculus, uh, you know there's a positive square root and a negative square root. Don't worry about that here. Um, so square, uh, standard deviation is always positive. So that's the difference between squaring and square rooting, just, just so you know. I'm gonna show you how to do that on a, on a spreadsheet. So first thing the formula says is take the mean away from each x value. So our x values are in the midpoints. So, and the mean is 73.07. Now. I could do some clicking. Uh, I find people make fewer mistakes if they do this, and it's a little easier to do. So I'm gonna click on the midpoint, because I'm gonna take that mean away from each one of them, and I do minus, don't forget your equals. So I did equals, clicked on that midpoint number, and then I'm gonna actually type in 73.07142, and because we're trying to make a computer happy out of math, my, math Excel, I'll do all these decimal places. I mean, it probably you don't have to be, this is overkill, but um, let's see, did I type that in right? 0 0.0741, I think I'm good. So I could fill that down now, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to save myself some steps. Now I have to square that difference. That's what the formula says to do, right? It's the formula says take each difference and square them. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do equals, I'm gonna click on that cell, whoops, click on that cell with that negative 38, the C2 cell, and then caret two, that's that shift six. That's how you do exponentiation, how do you raise it something to power on a spreadsheet? And that's gonna square it. 
And then how many of these 1487s do I have? Well, I only have one of them, but the other ones I don't. So I'm gonna do equals, I'm gonna click on my frequency times that squared difference. Okay, Let's see what I have equals. Now I'm gonna fill all three of these down all at once. So I selected them all. I go to the plus sign, get the cursor, and then I'm just gonna fill down. So that way, see what it did is it did all that calculation for us. Beats doing this on paper, and you're still doing it by hand. So now I gotta find out how many numbers I have. I think it's 42, I already did that on the other page. So sum of 42, yeah, and then I'm gonna be really fancy. I'm just, I could type that over here if I wanted to, because I wanna find the sum, the formula says find the sum of all those square differences. And there's, this is, this is how many there are, right? This would just be one of them. I need to find all of them, all right? So I need to find the sum of those. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that formula, but you could write, just write it all over again. So that's the sum of all those numbers. So the variance is that some number divided by one less than the number of numbers. So I'm gonna do equals. I'm just gonna click on that cell because I wanna type all those numbers. And I'm gonna divide it by 41. And that's the variance. And then I need to do the square root to get the standard deviation. So equals, uh, and then I'm gonna type SQRT for a square root, see how it comes up and then I'm just gonna click take the square root of that number. I just clicked on it, so I'd have to type it. So that's the standard deviation. Okay, so we've got a mean of 73. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write that, because we're gonna need that later on. Mean and the standard deviation. Let's see, the mean is 73.07, I'm gonna go with, and the standard deviation is 16.6. Six, I'm going to go with. I better go two decimal places. Six one, I guess. Okay, so we'll we'll need this for later on when I do the outlier tests. So here, Let's hold on to that. Now we get to do the five number summary, and I did a little bit of work ahead of time. Um, so I, I copied that frequency table. I also found the cumulative frequency, and this is a situation where this is actually useful. So what I did to get the cumulative frequency, you know, in case you missed this with, with Dr. Stevens' explanation, for the first class, the first bin, there's only one of them. The second bin adds three more to it, so I get a total of four numbers. I'm going to, third one, I get five more, so I get a total of nine numbers, so on and so forth, so I get 42 numbers. So how do I find the lower quart? Well, first off, what's the minimum? So we're saying the minimum is the lowest number, and our lowest number was what, 34.5? Uh, Okay, and then I guess I should I should include the midpoints here. Just a minute here, and make our work a little easier. Okay, there. So I copy those over, and I also see the maximum is the is in the biggest bin, which is four ninety four point five. And remember, these are estimates. We don't know the data, so we're only estimating. Um, so then let's see, the lower quartile, well, the lower quartile cuts off the bottom 25%, so it's the 25th percentile, so 0.25 times 42 is 10.5, um, and so we round up, because that's a decimal number, we round up to the 11th value. So what is the 11th value? Well, I know I've got one of them there, so it's not in there, and I've only got four of them in there, and I've got nine, only nine numbers here, so the 11th value is going to fall into the fourth bin. So what's the fourth midpoint? 64.5, 64.5. The median is the, 20, is the average of the 21st and the 22nd value. Well, I see that I've got 24 numbers. I had 18 in, in the 60 to 69. Now I've got 20, 24 numbers in the 70 to 79. So that tells me, that tells me the 21st number is gonna be we're estimated at 74.5, and the 22nd number is also 74.5 is what we're estimating. So that tells me the median that we're estimating to be 74.5. And then the upper quartile, as you see the math, 75% or 0 0.75 and 42, 31.5, we'll round up to 32. 
32 falls in this this next to last bin in the bin with 10 of a minute there's right so that will be 84.5 and that's my five number summary so now how do you do outlier tests well whether you're working with group data or if you actually know the data it works the same way um, now, I could do, I could do, use the mean and the standard deviation, and Dr. Stevens talks about uh, you doing two, two standard deviations either side of the mean, and anything outside of that is an outlier, can be considered an outlier. So, I'm going to do a lower fence. Lower fence. And I'm going to take the standard deviation. So, what's two times? 16, 16.61, well, let's see, equals this times two. And then I'm gonna subtract that number from the 73.07 and I have to add it. So the lower fence will be that mean minus two times that value. Okay. Also, I mean, just while I'm at it, you could do, I could have just done equals, clicked on the mean. My, if you know, if you're a little more spreadsheet savvy, uh, equals, click on the mean, do two times that standard deviation, not do that 33 calculation, and you get the same number. Okay. Now, what's the upper fence? This is the upper cutoff. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the mean plus the plus uh, two standard deviations. So equals, click on the mean, plus two standard deviations. Whoops, not that one, this one. Okay. And again, I could just double it and I'm gonna be really lazy and copy, uh, fill that. Oh, whoops, no, I can't fill it down. It, cause I didn't lock it in. Actually, this would be a good time to show you this. If I fill down, do you see what it did? It it um, slid all the calculations down. If you need to do that, if you're gonna do the fill down with the formula, you gotta make sure you're locking your cells. You can find out how to do that or, 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 or let me know and I can show you how to do that. Uh, I don't wanna take time to do that here. So I'm just gonna do uh, equals, click on the mean, uh, plus two times that, okay, same number. So those are the, fe those are the fences. Uh, for if I'm using the mean and the standard deviation. Now, uh, you know what? Let me get, do I still have the midpoints here? I do. So anything less than 39.85 can be considered an outlier. And I've got, I've got one number that's a 34.5. So that value could be considered an outlier using the mean and the standard deviation measure. Um, I don't have any upper outliers because my biggest number is not, isn't 106. So there's a potential outlier in that, in that lower bin. Um, how about if we're going to use the mean and, and, and 1.5 IQRs? Dr. Stevens talks about that. Where does he talk about that? Um, uh, let's see. He kind of, kind as, as I read, I stated before, he kind of disses this. But. Um, people that are stronger mathematic mathematicians than you or I or Dr. Stevens uh, came up, stated that uh, 1.5 IQRs, uh, if you go one, one and a half, instead of two standard deviations, you go one and a half inter, interquartile ranges above and below the median, those could be considered outlier. Um, John Tukey is the name of the guy that did this, who he was brilliant. And the story is that somebody walked up to him and said, John, how many high QRs would make determine an outlier? And he said, oh, I don't know, something like 1.5. Very funny story. Uh, towards the end of the class, I'm gonna point you towards a book to read after you get done with the course, if it's some good beach reading. Um, so anyways, let's get back, I digress. Let's, let's do the outliers for the IQR. So I get to figure out the IQR and the way you get an IQR, is you do Q3 minus, uh, oh yeah, right, yeah, Q3 minus Q1 
So you find out that range. And that's an important number because it's how many, you know, it's 50% of the data is in that range. So I'm gonna be lazy. I'm gonna click on equals to get a formula, click on the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. That's the IQR, 20. Maybe I could have figured that out. So now my lower fence, let me get fancy and do some copy in here. So the lower fence is gonna be the median minus 1.5 times the IQR. So, I mean, I could just say, I know it ha at half of 20 is 10, so one and a half IQRs be 30, when it's not such a nice neat number, equals 1.5 times that IQR. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that number and subtract it from the median and take that number and add it to the median. And yes, we could do this, these are easy numbers, we could do it by hand. I'm gonna do equals, I'm gonna click on the median. I'm sorry, I said median, it's the quartiles. Don't believe I did that. Yeah, you just subtract it from the quartiles. So anything, anything so we're gonna subtract 30 from Q1. So equals minus that 30, I could type it in. So lower core, I hope you caught it. That was a big, big error on my part. It's not the median we subtract from, it's the quartiles. So lower quartile minus one and a half IQRs. And then we're gonna do upper quartile plus one and a half IQRs. So anything outside of those ranges can be considered outliers. Well, I, my lowest number is, whoops, no, where was it? It's here. My lowest number is a 34.5. Well, that's right on the fence, but it's not an outlier. So do we have an outlier or do we not have an outlier? How do I know? Well, which, which measure should I use? Well, one thing I'm hoping that you get out of this week's, this week's work with Dr. Stevens is if this is a skewed distribution, you should be using the median and the IQR or the median and the five number summary to talk and to describe center spread and outliers. The mean would not be appropriate here because those though the lower value, that 34.5, and if for that matter, you know, the, these these lower groups are gonna are gonna skew the mean, pull it down away from the true center. So it wouldn't be an accurate description of the average or the center of this distribution. Okay, so I hope I hope you understand that 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 is a big I must know skewed distributions use the median and IQR or the median and the five number summary to talk about center and spread. If it's a symmetric distribution, you can use the use the mean and standard deviation. Okay, I guess let's see if I docked is this a long enough video? I think so. I'll stop. I mean, but basically this is it from A to Z. If you still want some more help with group data, let me know.